We are live. Hey, everybody. Thanks for letting me do a quick pit stop oil change session. Got, got all lubed up. You're all good yeah. now, huh? Ready to go. You're all good. Uh, before we get into the 4.5K, um, if you are at Madison and you're at the CrossFit Games, head over to Paper Street Coffee. Uh, hopefully there are a few stickers left. You can grab a free barbell spin sticker at the Paper Street Coffee booth. Say hi to Gabe if you are there. Um, so yeah, go check them out. Say hey. Uh, Tyler, where were you during the uh, during the run? I was on the course, me and Sousa. I was near uh, Darren Hunsucker and um, one of the other Mayhem guys. We were up. Uh, there was a downhill portion right towards the end before they came into the stadium. We were there. Um, we saw the athletes start um, about maybe 100 meters from the start line and then um, watch them come down the hill. We ran over the other side. Sorry, I'm late, guys. I was uh, I was just running a 522 mile for, you know, Okay. <laughs> just crushing it sorry about that i'm back now though good uh yeah we've we've talked about it several times if you are new to the show and haven't seen it um again this was not a 5k this was a 4.5k about 10 percent less like if you watch them there there was no way they were running sub six pace um it's pretty disappointing to have them on the on the world stage putting their times up and then putting stuff up that's not even feasible like it, does this does this kind of hurt the the crossfit's reputation or, or kind of tarnish what what they just did tyler um no i don't think people care that much you and i care and i think it, it was it, it was an oversight that that like is easily fixable because if you pull, pull back up the map real quick oh yeah um it was it was an easy it just makes me wonder why they didn't fix the issue because all you have to do like to add how much do you have to add to it to, to round it off to 5k like half of half a k 500 meters yeah. right yeah so yeah, it's okay. like yeah. if you go the uh what we're seeing all the way to the right of the track where it takes that um that 90 degree angle and then it goes through uh over the pond there and then goes through that loop all they would have had to do is add that kind of like that serpentine squiggle and then maybe like at Quan Park maybe add like some of the loop right yeah like why didn't it's 500 meters is so easy to gain so i, I just don't know why they called it a 5k yeah. and then didn't add the 500 meters i mean if they wheeled it three times like hinshaw said but they're using the same wheel you know that's that's right. a they're gonna, problem <laughs> they're gonna, uh, it's correct it's, to the it's reliable but it's not valid and i right yeah and i i get what jeff is saying that they all ran the same distance so he doesn't care yeah i that's, get i get some of that like yes it was the the same for everybody but when you see somebody like Bronislaw running sub 21, so he's running faster than the seven minute mile and he's like barely moving at the end. Like, right. I know what a 21 minute 5k is, right? Like, right. You, what do it looks not like. Run, you do not run that slow. Like he was not running sub six to balance out his eight plus minute mile at the end. Uh, I mean, everybody finished faster than a seven and a half minute seven minute mile like i think sure. christine kohlenbrander was the slowest at 22 40. That, yeah that's like a seven something mile and she was not going seven minutes uh, per mile at the end um but i feel like this this is always the case so i ran i think i ran a 5k at TF tfx um in texas and they were like oh yeah it's 5k and it was over like it was way over and it was like, well, what, what the hell was that? Like, how did you, and I, I think you're right. Like if you use the same wheel over and over again, it's gonna, it's gonna be accurate to that wheel, but it's like, you have to do it like, you know, do it on the wheel, do it in a truck and then do it in a car. And it's like, it should be probably around the same for all of them. Yeah. Uh, outdoors 24 seven replace time with weights. Would you care if the barbell was only 400 pounds, but you said it was 500, hundred percent. 
Like, okay, that that's that's a pretty me. good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they're all yeah, they're they all lifting four hundred pounds, but on this, you're saying that it's five hundred, and we all know it's not. It's a very good, like, that's a really good way to put it. Because if you put it in different metrics, it's like, oh yeah, well, because the powerlifting community. Could you imagine the powerlifting community would freak out? They'd be like, no, you're not <laughs> pulling five hundred pounds. Uh, Paul Gov, five thousand meters is or four, five thousand yards is four thousand five hundred seventy-two meters. I think they made that mistake. That would be about the same amount. Yeah, if they had it set on yards instead of meters. I have a I have a I have a wheel at home, and sometimes I forget. Oh, I'm on yards, not meters. That's interesting. I, I mean, that, that lines up like uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that. That would be a bad. Yeah, it'd be hilarious if that was what happened. Uh. Jenny Pye from Family Films. This uh, nice Bob Ross painting behind you, Derek. Are you yeah, I, paint, with, I painted it myself. Mm-hmm. You competing with Brian Friend? Yeah. At least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look. I think they just updated the leaderboard here. Let's start with the women uh, since the coverage of them on the live stream was basically non existent. Uh, Tyler, you were there. You didn't see it, but. Basically, it, it focused the entire the higher thing was focused on the top five guys. Sure. And then you saw Emily Roll. Emily Roll. And, and she was um, she was she blowing was everybody out, smoking every like I think there was a solid minute and a half between her and the last or, and the next round of girls. Her and Katrin, right? Yes. Yeah. She uh she got her by 34, 32 seconds. Yeah. So and I mean, it I'm seemed sure. like forever out there on the track. We were just sitting there, and I was like. Where are the girls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where are they? And, yeah. and Emily didn't have to push it. Like she, I mean, I was no, surprised she looked she was, pretty calm on her face. Yeah, I was surprised she was actually running as fast, fast as she, she was. Like she could have easily turned around and just kind of coasted in. This is one I can't wait to rescore because I want to know like that distance for her that she pulls away from the other girls. Right, and but that's also where you look at the Z score and you go. If she knew that she could get more points on it, she probably runs she would have 17, down, yeah. 17 10 or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and really puts puts it, the pressure on them. Uh, yeah, she Davis, probably, yeah. Sorry, she probably didn't kick there at the end where she would have. She probably was just like, oh, I'll just cruise in with these yeah, guys. Coasts, Unless, yeah. I would love to interview. I, I'll, see, I'll see if I can find her. I would love to interview her and say, hey, did you like, did you, were you racing the boys or were you just like, hey, I'm good and I'll coast to the end? Yeah. That's uh, it. Like, because I think Sam Briggs was like back in the day. She was like, "No, I wanted to beat the boys." <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam was also at the very, very front of, of it too. Yeah, I think yeah, there's yeah. something if you are trying to win the whole thing overall, versus I think she was what like eighth or something like that. Right. Hey, yeah. Uh, you know. So, uh, Katrin David's daughter second, Ariel Lowen third, Alexis Raptus fifth, Gabby Magala sixth, uh, Emma Lawson doing what she needs to in seventh. Uh, John may or may not show up after seeing Kelly Baker finish eight. He, he did not think that uh, she was going to do so well, but uh, did well. Uh, Sydney Wells in 10th. So not too bad for her. Yeah, let's talk uh, about that one. I think I said 10th to 15th. You did. I said top 10. So okay. I think. So we, yeah. You, you, you split the gap, got that. Laura Horvath 13th. Uh, so she dropped some. Going down the list, uh, I saw Elise Rodeo uh, earlier on had Abby Gale Domit. Did not do what she thought she might be able to. Um, and then going it's so the weird list. watching her run. I mean, she runs like a gazelle. It was just not super fast. Like mm. her, her, each one of her leaps is like four feet, you know, but it was <laughs> really slow it's turnover. Not turnover time, yeah. Uh, Barry McCockner. Uh, John Young doesn't know that Kelly Baker is a good runner. And needs his analysis privileges revoked. Uh, hopefully he jumps on. We can give him a hard time. Uh, yeah, uh, going right back up here. Alex Gazan. We talked a lot of talk about the VO2 max with Hinshaw on Savon's podcast. That did not translate into a good 5K. And uh, at the very bottom, Christine Colenbrander, Alexia Williams, Olivia Kerstetter on the women's side. Um, yeah, uh, Christine didn't look great. Her lips were white. I, yeah, I was focusing on that. Like everybody's lips will turn white whenever they they went too hot, and hers she she's pale. 
Was she up near? Was she up a little bit higher up? Like maybe she went out too hot, or was it just? Yeah, I think time? first round she looked okay, and then the second round I was like, oh no. Um, <laughs> which, if you want to move on to the men, or we get your yeah, we we'll do it overall here. right here real yeah. quick. Uh, okay. On the women's overall, Emma Lawson added to her to her lead a little bit. I think uh, she's now up by seventeen over Alexis, uh, Ariel Lowen, and then Air. Uh, Laura Horvath uh, drops down into, or stay, she she was third into this, I think. She dropped down into fourth. Um, oh, yeah, Ariel looked great in this workout. Like I didn't expect her to be that high. She's a shorter athlete. I mean, I know she's aerobically fit. It's just, I mean, she ran with the big girls on that, so mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was good. Yeah. I, so I mean, it's super loud. It's not. Gonna be good. No, you're good, Mr. Young, joining us. Uh, Laura Horvath now trails Emma Lawson uh, by 44 points. Uh, John, what's up? Sydney Wells, Are we good? Sol yeah. solid, solid tenth place. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I take nothing from that. But great job, great job calling tenth place, Brian. And uh, uh, Barry, yeah, McC Barry McCockner wanted to let you know that uh, Kelly Baker did very well, eighth place. So. Kelly Baker did do well. Uh, ESC sounds 499. Uh, either Emma or Alexis is winning the whole thing, calling it now. Well, you're wrong, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> good job. Uh, Tyler, you weren't on this morning. Uh, a lot of talk about Laura Horvath, if she can kind of catch up to Emma and Alexis. She keeps, you know, we expected this to happen, right? Laura would probably be beat by this. Uh, as you think about the intervals and you think about the, the Olympic weightlifting, do we, can, can Laura close the gap today or is she going to do it tomorrow? Let's see. She's 50, uh, less than 50 points back yeah, from practice. Yeah. Yeah. And then Lawson too. Yeah. I think, I think we do see a good, we have a good day for her. I mean, the lift for sure. And then um, the intervals, I don't think, are terrible for her. I, I definitely see a, probably a top 10 performance for her on that. So, yeah, I think she's going to close the gap. I think she'll be top three by the end of the day, probably move Ariel out. And then Alexis has been like a force. I don't – like she's just not giving any ground. The, looking at uh, that – look at – yeah, she got fourth in the 5K. So, yeah, I mean, that's that was pretty good. I did not expect her to do that well. So she's not she's not giving any ground, and so it's like she's gonna take a hit. I think a little bit in the in the strength lifts, um, but I mean like she's outperformed everything so far. So I'm not gonna discount her on that. So I think Laura will be uh, definitely third, if not second, by the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, ESC sounds. We take back the nice things we said about John yesterday. <laughs> uh, T Alex Kazan in fifth, Bethany Flores in sixth. Um, Gabby Magala finally break into the top ten and ninth, and Catherine Davis daughter in the in the tenth. Uh, how far down do we think we can go where somebody has a shot at the podium? Like, does yeah, can so Gabby does Gabby do that, or is, or is it just too big? No, no. Um. Top five, that's it. Top five. I don't – so I'm looking at this individually. I don't think Jamie Simmons can make that push in, into the top five. Uh, Bethany Flores, maybe. She's, I think, the one who has the, the, the best chance. And I don't see yeah, it. The totals good. Yeah, Emily Rolfe's going to have a bad bad time on the, on the total. Um, Gabby would be the only one who can do it. But it's, it's not about who – like, it's not about the fact that they're inside the top ten. It's athlete – dependent for me and i think gabby's the only one who can do it and i mean she's really gonna have to kick butt to do it today mm -hmm. yeah uh on the men's side uh jelly toast dude he looks strong yep i really wish we saw him against Rick, uh ricky was there because i mean now like i don't know ricky's always been the best runner in the crossfit for me but uh i mean i feel like he kind of won in a dominating way uh I, I mean, Adler freaking murdered it too, but Hosty just pulled away whenever, he, like when he wanted to pull away, he did it. So 
Yeah. I, <laughs> did 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 uh, Tyler John? Did you see the interview with with Yella afterwards? No. Uh, so he got interviewed afterwards. Basically, he had run a 5K earlier this week, and what he said was he knew his pace that he could hold and was comfortable with it. And he just kept watch, looking at his watch going, yeah, I'm, I'm slower than that pace. I'm good. Like, yeah. he just knew that, like, <laughs> just kind of lay, laying back, waiting, uh, and then just waited for somebody to take off. Adler did that. Yellow just followed him and then knew that he was going to have be able to out-sprint it. I, I knew yeah. as, the, the longer that Yellow stayed in that top group, it was bad for everybody else. Like, he was going to have the, the best sprint if he needed to. I think Roman had the best sprint. I knew. <laughs> so we, I, we were positioned. So we were, we were outside the stadium. We probably had maybe a hundred meters to 150 meters left, where we were sitting. So they were they were cresting the top of that hill and coming down, and uh, Yellow was right behind Adler, right. And you could tell Adler was trying to keep pace, and you, were, Yellow was just buying his time. Um, his the look on Yellow's face was much more calm. Um, it was good. I was surprised that Adler was able to fend him off as much as he did. Yeah. It was interesting, though, because, like, early on, Yella didn't look – I mean, just his body language didn't look great, but he just – he was just – that's just how he, how he runs, I don't, I think. I just don't think he's a smooth runner. He's just a good runner. Jason uh, C.A., don't worry about your hair. You look fine, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, I, I got too much gel in it. I over – like, I <laughs> – I'm working on like three hours of sleep and I just like, I put like a freaking clump in my hand and I went, and then I was like, Oh no, I immediately screwed. <laughs> uh, Lazar Dukic, uh, fourth place. Good. Not great. Um, Brent Fikowski, fifth place. Jay Crouch. Again, he's staying up there doing what he needs to. Uh, Chandler Smith. Uh, we're not there yet. We're, we're uh, working our way down the leaderboard uh, till we see see Vellner, oldest Will Morin in ninth, Patrick Vellner in tenth. That dude, uh, he, uh, what happened? What happened to Vellner? You know, I didn't, I didn't even notice him. Mute yourself. Just you hit the button. Muted. I'm sorry. Give me a minute. <laughs> Am I muted? Okay. Can you hear me now? Um, I hear you. I'm trying to teach John. There's a mute button on the front of these mics. I'm trying to teach John how to use it. It's anyway. Uh, I never even noticed Felder. I never saw him, um, which probably means he was in the pack with everybody else. Yeah, tenth. Um, I mean, was I would have never said he was going to get top five on this workout. Would you all have? I would not have. I thought. I think he finished about where I expected him to, but. He was in that lead group of five. five like he, he was in the top five. Uh, running right with Roman. And then Roman. Um, running right with Roman. And then Roman kept going. Uh, kept going, and he didn't. And he faded past the pack. He was ahead of the Will Morad, Noah Olsen, um, Farkowski pack for, I would say, 80%, at least on the live stream, or on the YouTube stream. Um, is that what you guys saw as well? Because uh, we're uh, he's got a different vantage yeah. point than what we had. Um, yeah, yeah. So but Pat, and then and then he just wasn't there in the end. Yeah, Pat was in the back. He was in the top five in the back. He was not pushing the pace at all. It was saying like he was he was hanging on with Roman for the <laughs> for the while. And then uh, when the other three took off, you know, it looked like Ro Pat had a shot at it. And then Roman Roman took off and just went crazy. And Pat went the other direction. Uh, James Sprague down in 13th. So maybe not I as did, good. A... I did spec expect more out of Sprague. I, he didn't look bad. It was just like, I expected him to be a little bit higher. He's so long. You'd think he'd be a decent runner. Um, and, and it's not a bad score. It's just, I did expect more. Uh, Travis B here said Velner fell off 55 seconds in the last four minutes. So he had about, uh, yeah, I expected him to be top five. Four. Oh man, CrossFit killing the internet. Um, Justin Madero's fifteenth. He's done right. Like, there's just something going on with him. 
Uh, as far as podium goes, prob probably, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, he. I don't even think he has top ten in him at this point. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Um, I mean, Dunn is in what? What's that? Dunn? I said Dunn is in. Dunn in what context? Dunn uh, for I, the podium. I mean, obviously, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he has any chance at the podium. Mm -hmm. No. No. You I don't think so. Huh? You don't think so? I don't think he can podium though. No. no, that's uh, what I'm saying. Dunn. Yeah. yeah I, I don't even think. I mean, you look at. You look up here. I mean, he's 457 with Bjorkvin, and 366. So, I mean, at seventh place, he's 90 points behind seventh place. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a surmountable effort, but it doesn't look like he has it in the tank. Like, no. he's not looked he's not looked totally healthy, and if, if the allegations that he is actually hurt are true, how does the lift yeah. bode for him? I mean, that's a surmount. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. Um. Going down the list, Luke Parker. I mean, Jan Koski. Uh, Derek, that, that was your best pick. Well, that was my second best pick. <laughs> On Dukic. <laughs> you had a whole bunch of other options there. Let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, no, I, actually, I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, Ant Haynes. John, you got that one right. He was not where we thought he might be. I mean, seconds ahead of, of uh, Colton. Quite the quite the difference between those two. Great job on Colton. Like we'll take twenty third all day. Look at look at two spots behind Colton. Dallin Pepper. That that was not a good event for him. Uh, I mean, is that surprising? Uh, John thought he might be a little bit better, like what, middle of the pack. He's. I did. I thought he'd be middle of the pack, but he's kind of been not as bad as Justin, but um, juice from him this weekend than he's had thus far. Uh, Corn YA is probably the most surprising one. Like if you if you map this out, that's a that's a 5 k. Mm -hmm. If you know we're doing four and a half k, right? Um, right. That's not fast. No, no, that is that is not good at all. Um, that's probably closer to twenty five. And he's he's better than this. Like like he's he is not a bad runner at all. I think some something's going on with him. Whether it's he's sick or he went for a swim in the lake again, <laughs> um, I don't know. But he's he's man. It's weird. This year has been weird uh, because there's just so many guys that just aren't performing well <laughs> right and especially it's like, not a training thing it's not a training thing like everything they've done in the past points to they're going to be well and do well in these things and they're just not yeah especially because sam i mean he only beat braun by 16 seconds <laughs> <laughs> yeah braun was lumbering he put a little bit of a sprint on to, to, to nip braun right. in the end yeah increased his mole walk yeah yeah uh so we look at the overall leaderboard over for the men. Roman, he's doing what he needs to. Just a small little gap there. Uh, Jeff only was able to catch up by uh, make four point gain, so he's up by ninety six. Chandler Smith in third. Jay Crouch in fourth. Brent Fikowski holding on in fifth. And right now, the rookie of the year, Yellow Hoste. Yeah, yeah. Uh, event win. Um, kind of. I won't say dominating, but I mean convincingly an event win. Um, yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, Wad Zombie, 499. Uh, given Colton's showing now that he's mostly, mostly healthy, do you think he has potential to be the new Bridges and get close to the podium at some point? Sorry with you, Tyler. I had. <laughs> I'm blown away that he's this high in the leaderboard. I mean, but the leaderboard is so like it's so anti what I'm I'm used to. I mean, I I'm not going to throw it out that that's possible. I mean, he's doing amazing, and like twelfth, he ended the day in twelfth yesterday, and now he's in thirteenth. What's happening? So yeah, I'm not going to count him out. I I mean, if he pushed into the top ten, I wouldn't be surprised. He's going to take a hit on the on the on the lifts, but like the interval is going to bode well for him. 
to like, yeah, I could see, I could see top 10 for sure. Do you think the intervals are going to be good for him? That's the a exact big opposite box. as far that's as how that box. happens. Yeah. That's a big box, Tyler. Uh, do you, do you know any, have you heard anything about the requirements on that? Is it, is it a straight box jump or <laughs> is it a get over? I'm not sure. Uh, they, on the, I guess maybe you guys didn't see it. So during after the event last night that they played the um, they played the demo, like a short little reel of the of them testing out the workout and it looked like a get over. It was progressively higher. Okay. So it was like in the beginning it was short and then it got higher as the as the burpee box jump overs got. Yeah, because it got up to like the men are at forty eight inches. So Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like he's gotten shorter, so he's dealt with, you know, how how much time he has to spend on those. I, I mean, maybe it is because like Taylor and I were doing burpee box jump overs, or get overs the other day at like forty eight inches, right? Taylor's a little bit taller than me, and so he was able to jump over a little bit quicker than I. And I, I mean, I see Earl's point, but I still think he'll do well in the workout. Yeah, like we've talked about this, like the intervals is a very, very weird workout. Like I, th- I, I just went and picked it on heat one. It was, it was tricky. Like not sure what, what really translates into this when you start looking at, at that. Um, well, taking a second on that, like usually when there are tricky workouts like this, we would expect that the the fans would be a bit conflicted on the picks. Right. Yeah. And so Chandler's in first, he only has, uh, he only has 21% of the votes, which is low. I mean, it's not bad, but it's low. Um, Jeffrey Adler's next 16%. So that's not a very big spread between them. And then for women, it's Emma Lawson with 24%. So that people seem pretty confident in that pick. And then Alexis Raptus. I think people are riding the high up Alexis. I don't think she'll do bad in this, but I don't think she'll win. What do you guys think? So, yeah, I, I like that Chandler pick. Um, get it, getting a little bit ahead. That, that's who I have penciled in right now uh is chandler on 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 that piece of it the women i think is uh a little tougher to to choose on my point actually i have an idea but i can't use her again i've already used her twice so um have we looked at the heat one app to see how the uh shot caller is doing is this you humble bragging let's look at let's look at the pro league um why don't we do that first that's not as big I mean, that's where your picks count, man. I mean, the world, I'm just messing around. The pro league is the only one I'm taking serious. Well, the pro league. uh, Are you still in second? Yeah, I'm still in second. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Pro league, I'm also in second, but I am behind John in the pro league. Um, So I need to get with with Adam on what the tie break is because you're in second, but you're tied with one, one, two, three people. Um it's it's the number of uh, Instagram followers. It's num- oh yeah, 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 that's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm six points back in the worldwide shot caller. Shane, if Shane, if you're listening, please, please comment. That would be great. That would be uh, Jared Graybill's an eighth. I know seven, seven points behind. behind he was me. like, I talked to him outside like day one, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm just like kind of nonchalant playing." Like, what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Listen, this 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 next event is going to shake up the heat app more than anything else, I think, um, because I think a lot of people will be picking different people. Me and you know Ryan, we talked about the 5K, and like we just automatically have the same picks, right? So Sunday, we don't know the events, and people will start running out of players to play, but um. I bet this next one shakes up the leaderboard a lot. You could be on top after this uh, next event, Brian. The I number completely, of the, completely agree. Every event we're going to see switches in the. It, it's like now we're getting into the weird picks. Like if you picked heavy on the front end, and now you're not going to run out of picks. Like it's going to be awesome to watch the leaderboard on Heat One for the rest of the day. Yeah. Uh, before we get to our picks, uh, let's take a look at the overall leaderboard on the men's side. Same thing on the as we did with the women. How far down does somebody have the ability to get onto the podium? I, I, I'm saying probably only Adler and I don't even know if Chandler has the op- opportunity to, to get to the top spot, but how far down can we get onto the podium? Keep scrolling. 
Eighth. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Look eighth. at that. Look at that drop between Pat and. Uh, yeah. and no, you laugh. I'm almost guaranteeing it happens. I <laughs> guaranteeing Velner's on the podium. No, no, no. I guarantee like it's really, really close. I, I'm not going to guarantee he's on the podium, but I, I'm willing to bet that he will be. I'm not going to guarantee it. But uh, I bet it's close. I bet Fakowski. Fakowski might ruin my dreams, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, here's a little bit of a tangent, but on the team side, it uh, looks like Torian uh, Mayhem. Uh, out of Australia withdrew because of Brandon Swan's elbow. So that is a bummer. Uh, Peter brought that up in his very, very long winded uh, conversation and discussion yesterday. Um, so did I just see Taylor? Yeah. Taylor's here. I'll set up my computer and go sit right there. Oh, nice. So we got oh. a triple cast going in here. Nice. Uh, Why don't you sit right next to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, Derek, how far down do you think we could see somebody jumping onto the leaderboard? I would say just looking at the um, <clears throat> the point difference, I, I would agree with with eighth place. That's that's where you see the biggest gap, 30 points in between eighth and ninth. Everyone else is pretty clustered together until you get, you know, toward the upper part of that first and second. Uh, do we do we think that is there any chance that Roman or Adler do not podium? I can't see it. I mean, Adler's going to be good at – I think he'll be good at this next one, and the total, he's going to be great. Got a shot to win it. Like, a guaranteed top five in the total. So, I – and then Roman's got, a, you know, a 100-point lead on him, basically. I, 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 I can't see a world where they don't, they don't podium. I think there's a world where Jeff, where Jeff can not be second, but I don't see a world where both of them are out of the podium contingent. Yeah. Uh, D Zudi, uh, ring muscle loves maybe I, th that's where Adler has a chance to catch him. I don't think there's any chance like Roman has to have two terrible events out of five. And I, Sunday has to just go completely against him. Well, you know, he's, you know, Castro is not going to program ring muscle ups because Roman, uh, Gave him a big pat on the back yesterday during the press conference. You see that? <laughs> I did not. Yeah, see they that. changed the event. They changed the event as soon as that happened. Yeah. He was like, "We can't do this." Event. <laughs> he said he was honored to be sitting next to the Dave and that he was uh, one of his heroes. And so, yeah, we're not going to see ring muscle ups, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Fifty ring muscle ups for time changed to a five k rock <laughs> or five mile rock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So if if it can go all the way down to potentially eighth place to hit the podium. Uh, who, who who does make that? Is it Chandler or does somebody else work their way up? And uh, I think we all know the answer. I think you know your answer. <laughs> I say Fikowski's going to podium. Fikowski? He's looking good. Um, he Man, I wanted to talk about this when we were talking about the run. He totally like just sandbagged everybody until the last probably two-thirds. He took off two thirds of the last lap. He just took off. He made such yeah, a him and big Velner move. Had reverse strategies, and it... I think he was somewhere like tenth to fifteenth on the first lap, and then he jumped to like he, whatever he finished in fifth. He jumped super fast. It was it was really interesting. Taylor, what's up, man? What's up? How you doing? Good. Thanks for joining. Uh, How's can you hear me? We can hear you. I think my stream's slow. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off and try my hotspot. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. I think Brent does have a good shot at it at this point. Um, but then Jay Crouch, he just continues to surprise me. I. The tough part right now that we have is we only know two of the five <laughs> events that are remaining. And we, we have a pretty good idea of the Olympic total. Who's going to do well in that? I don't think we have as good of a picture on the intervals. 
And then tomorrow with three unknown events and down to the top 20, like that scoring table changes a lot. One bad event is huge. Uh, so that one is going to be. Uh, my stance on Z score and scoring how it is like I, I I'm test. I, I like to, to, it's the fittest on earth. I think we should test for the fittest on earth. And so we should account for one rep, one second and all that. But with that being said, this scoring system makes it super gay and it, I think it drives the excitement because now it's like, it's a lot more expensive per, per position. Mm-hmm. Um, while it's, it's a bit unfair. I don't, I don't think it's super fair. Cause it's like, if you beat me on this by one second and I, I lose a huge margin of points in comparison to the front after the week, that sucks, but it does make it exciting. Cause people are really going to like push. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Um, I, I, there's a lot of points up for grabs. What does Z score look? What does Z score look like right now? I haven't run it. I haven't had time. I, I'm gonna probably gonna spend some time tonight before the final day just to tell you what happened tomorrow. You're gonna wait till uh, just after the games to like finalize everything. I, I'll probably wait Monday morning and release everything that happened. Taylor, first time coaching backstage. How was that for you? Uh, yeah, man, it's, I just want to, I just want to be there and be doing it. I think more than anything, I think that's the feeling I walked away with is you can want it really badly. And, you know, at, to some degree, your hands are tied as a coach. You can do everything you can to prepare someone. And at the end of the day, um, it's hard. It's the 40 fittest people there. Um, I think more than anything, I was just looking around and, you know, fired me up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the goal, right? Get back next year. That's the goal. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on the programming so far? <sighs> I guess, I guess start with the first six, like the first two days. Yeah, yeah. Like, first is six. that a good, is that, was that a good way to get to the cuts? I know you don't like the cuts, but. I, to be honest, after seeing them play out, uh, my opinion changed a little bit. I think what Dave said to a degree has a lot of weight in terms of those bottom athletes just being drug along. I think the people who wanted to fight for a spot within the top 30 had a chance on Helen and the people who fought to get their spot did. I think Abby Domit and uh, Caroline Stanley are perfect examples of that, like just absolutely sending it on that workout to get in. Um, and the other ladies – whether that's them being checked out or just, you know, not, not fit enough to be there. Um, I think when we were on with Pat, he doesn't have that perspective because he's running his own race all weekend and in the top of the pack for the most part. So he doesn't get to see what happens with those other athletes. Um, so seeing that, I think they were appropriate. Um, the, the workouts themselves, t- to this point, I haven't had the opportunity to put quite a bit of deep thought. I will say I was a little underwhelmed with a little underwhelmed just with not much barbell one um which at the end of the day is not not the worst thing in the world um but a little underwhelmed with how simple some of the things were when you have an opportunity like this at the crossfit games to really get unique um and to have fun and to wow people i'm a little underwhelmed with with some of the things Um, a lot of upper body pulling, like a ton. Mm -hmm. So I I guess we will see, and I, you know, there was the inverted medley, but that didn't take the toll on the athletes like pig chipper, alpaca, redux, Helen, all in concert with one another. So we'll see what tomorrow holds, I guess, because today there's, there's not really any, anything to counteract all that upper body pulling. Um, but every it seems like every year at the games, there's sort of a muscle group theme that gets just absolutely fucking destroyed. And to this point, it's yeah. been the last. Yeah, we talked about this. Do you think we won't see rings then, Taylor? I would be very surprised if they put more pulling in the competition. Although we saw the hand over hand sled pulls, or at least it seems like that's likely to come out. And I think if it does, I'm just going to be asking myself, where is depressing where's where's the balance yeah yeah um 
Yeah, we talked about it, it feels like last year it went from lightweights metabolic conditioning to power strength output and you saw that with Haley dropping off laura going uh making the charge it almost feels like it's the opposite this year and yeah. we don't know what sunday is but um we've only had the dumbbell snatches is really the only lightweight implement that's been lifted everything else has either been body weight or something heavy mm. But, but but nothing really traditionally cyclable. Uh, I guess, you know, the kettlebells to a degree, but only 36 repetitions. Again, the 200-pound sand, sandbag to a degree, but again, only 50 repetitions. So there's – and then even on the dumbbell, 63 repetitions with a 50 or a 35 is absolutely nothing. There's mm -hmm. no uh, – that wasn't the workout to any degree. You know, there yeah. maybe, maybe shuffling one or two places based off of your cycle rate, but that was run, run, run. Um, same with the 5K. I find it odd to put Helen on Friday night where the workout is the run and then come back Saturday morning with a 5K where the workout is the run. Um, and then even on uh, the bike, you know, the event ride, there's 800 meters or 1,000 meters of running on that event. Mm -hmm. um, just, just very interesting to this point. Yeah. Uh, how has... How is the back of the scenes, like the athlete briefings, how have those gone? Has there been any confusion or anything from a logistical standpoint that you could comment on? No, uh, the, everything looked pretty smooth in terms of athlete briefings um, for the six events that I was there for. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't notice anything where people were just like shaking their head and like, what, what does this mean? So I think to this point, they've done a good job. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, all right. Intervals. Um, we've been kind of struggling on who, what kind of athlete is going to do well in this type of thing. Like the other ones you look at heat one app and there's an obvious favorite, like everybody picked Emily Rolf. I think every, almost everybody picked Lazar Jukic or yellow mm -hmm. Where, where do you, what do you see on this one? Like what athlete does this favor? Um, I think one, they're going to be testing recoverability. So your ability to go really, really hard um, on part one, rest for a brief period of time and then do it again. Um, so I think in years past, traditionally, I would have looked at someone like, like Justin. Um, but to this point, it's hard to, it's hard to pick him to, to do well at this point. Unfortunately, I just, mm -hmm. he doesn't, he doesn't look like himself. Um, beyond that, I would say, you know, Chandler to me is someone who seems like a good pick because he's very good. He's, he's a quick twitch, like on the box jump overs and the burpees. Um, and he's fit enough to row 30 calories hard in part one and 30 again in part two. Um, I think beyond that, it's hard not to pick Roman as well because there are 60 total calories. And if you can row at a, a 2000 hour pace, 2000 cal per hour pace, and that not affect you the way it affects everyone else. Um, so I'm probably looking at, at someone like Chandler Roman Adler as well, who I think was close to winning 21.1 when it was the dumbbell snatch burpee box jump over, or, or he did phenomenally mm -hmm. well in that workout. Um, man, it's hard. It's hard not to look at those three guys. And that seems a bit bland because they're in the top, but yeah. I, uh, I've been thinking about this. I'd, I'd be interested to hear your take on this, Taylor. I, I, when I get approached with workouts like this, I want to find what's a correlative workout, uh, something in the past that we can use as reference. So when I look at this workout, I see the row. So a big guy is going to do well there. The burpee box get overs also helps a taller guy, but you can't be too large so that you are slow on the burpee box jump overs. Right. So I think it leans pretty heavily towards that. And so I looked at 23.2 uh, a, the shuttle run and the burpees, right. And so it's like, if you did well on that workout, I could see you doing well on this workout. And so if you look at that, there was Jeffrey Adler uh, got first of the games athletes. He got uh, 37th overall in the world on that. And then you see Colton Mertens. Um, I'm not counting Colton Mertens for this workout. And then the two that I see next are Sam Conroy and uh, Dallin Pepper. I really like Dallin for this pick. I He's... I, I still think he has a hard time winning any event, but I think he's a pick that could be really solid, like definitely top three to five. I don't hate that. I think, I think 
more than anything, after thinking a little bit more deeply on the workout, I, I like Sam as a pick just because at Mayhem they do a lot of burpee box get overs. Um, and regardless of, I think height is less important until you get towards the margins, like someone like Yelly versus someone like Colton. Um, I think if you're in the range of like a five foot seven to a five eleven, the height is pretty irrelevant. But how athletic and fast you are getting over the box on the get overs, I think is highly critical to this workout. So I could see someone like Sam doing really well. Um, I, and it's I hard think- to pick him though because uh, he's. He just ran a 22.54.5K. Like he's like got he the same trying. thing Justin's got going on. <laughs> no, I don't think he has the same thing Justin's I know, but why? Going on. Why? Why? Because I think he knows he's not going to be in the top, so why spend himself when he can destroy a lot of people in the Olympic total and in his next workout? Better, yeah, to, better to take – better to take dog in workouts? Dude, I, I don't think – I mean, he was running with Braun. Yeah, but the, the, the gap, I mean – He's being smart. So Sam, Sam got – 29th and 22 23 spencer or no even 20th moritz moritz was 2057 so he got beat by a minute and a half like there was no reason for him to move all he had to do is beat braun and take his 29th so like if he was struggling and he realized it like what's the point for yeah if you're knowing you're not pushing yeah yeah it's just not taylor you, you were talking about people's ability to get over the box Am I on super hard delay? You're do, you're fine. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Taylor, you were talking about people's ability, athleticism, get over the box. Uh, how bad did you want to kill me during our burpee box get overs? <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did a workout the other day, and uh, t- Tyler, it was it was like a, supposed to be a one to one split the reps pretty evenly, and. I ended up just doing the workout basically. Um, <laughs> so it's all good. Um, but this is another event that I would look at and kind of be chomping at the bit for because burpee box get overs are pretty big. It's again, I think speed over the box is really important. And the guys who are athletic and clearly have done a lot of these and can get over the box quickly um, and not use the knee and not waste time at the top and just get up, stay low, get over, get down. Um, it'll play well. I, I, I could see Sam doing well at this workout. And it reminds me of a Mayhem workout from maybe a year and a half ago. I think they posted on Mayhem Monday, which was like every four minutes for eight sets. I believe it was like a 15 calorie row, 10 burpee box jump overs, 15 cal echo, 10 burpee box jump overs to a 30. Um, and, and Sam, and I think Nistler and Taylor Williamson were all there doing it. And that I would, um, I just can see Sam doing very well in an event like this. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, all right. Before we get to our picks, real quick, there is a cut. There, and once the intervals start, there's only a 20 minute gap between the end of intervals and the start of uh, of the Olympic total. So there isn't much time to talk about that after the fact. So top 20 cut after tonight. Uh, Sam Quant sits on the bubble with Nick Matthew trailing by 11 points. Who do you guys see bumping down? And if, if they do bump down, who, who takes their spot? We'll start with you, Derek. Um, I think Quant and Matthew are going to switch positions. I'd put Matthew in the top 20. Okay. Tyler? Sorry, what's the question again? Who, who do you see you know, moving into the top 20? And, it, and if somebody does move in, who, who gets the uh, short end and is looking on the outside? I think I don't like any of the top the 21 through 24 there. I don't think any of those guys are going to make the cut. <laughs> John? <laughs> It was that was just very blunt. I I don't like any of those guys. Uh, um, I, I'm sorry you asked me, and it's like that's how I feel yeah. about it. Like Nick Matthews not gonna do. He's gonna do probably okay. Uh, he's not gonna do well in the lift. I think even with the big guys, Sprague no, Moritz maybe, but I doubt it. And Ant Haynes definitely not. So I mean, I'm sorry. You're great athletes, but that's how I feel. Nick is strong, man. He's strong, but he's not the strongest. I think Aldis has 
the potential to drop out out of these people. I don't I don't know if he will. I think I feel like Spencer Panchik is going to be pretty good in this interval workout. But um, and I don't know for Aldis. But if Aldis has a bad workout in intervals, I know he's going to be really bad in the total. And I think somebody like Nick Matthew or Moritz Fiebig, who potentially could be good at both of those workouts. It's not a given they will, but they potentially could be good at both of those workouts. And Aldis has two bad workouts. I think Aldis could drop out. And one of those two guys could drop could get in. I think Quant does enough. I think Quant. It's hard to say he's not going to do enough because he's freaking Sam Quant. Like he's, you know, he's one of the fittest guys in the world. So it's hard to say he's he's for sure not going to make it. But um, and, and yeah, fitter than, anybody fitter than Hopper, oldest, fitter than Hopper, fitter than Hopper. Yeah, two years in a row. Uh, <laughs> oldest, oldest is the one that I could see dropping out, and then it'll either be Nick Matthew or Moritz Fiebig. I don't, I don't see anybody else. Yeah. I, I'm afraid that oldest is going to take less than five points on this last one or on the Olympic total. And Nick Matthew jumps in from that. Uh, Taylor, do you see anything different from what they've said? I, I agree with John. I think if there's anyone that I look to in terms of, they have a potential to drop out. I look at oldest, but at the same time, that's what, like a 45 point lead he's got on 20th. So anyone who bumps him out, um, and even more, like I guess a, a 56 point lead or something over Nick Matthew, that's going to be hard to overcome. Um, mm -hmm. So I just, I don't know. How, how does the, the two lift, two attempts per lift play into this? I, I, I don't even know how it's, I don't even know how the flow is going to work yet. So I just, I'm having a hard time visualizing how it's going to work and how it's going to go down. Yeah, I, I keep envisioning it's going to be like the 2017 where it had those two lifts to 20, 10 or so athletes on each platform or 20, yeah. 15 maybe. I don't know. Um, so just kind of every 20 seconds, just kind of go through that line. Uh, Regardless, though, I think the uh, the strongest people will still win. The medium middle people will still be in the middle and the weak people will still be weak. Like it, we're, I don't think it changes the order of how they're going to finish. We're just not going to see – as high of numbers as we could if if there was more attempts. You know, you know what I mean? I still think the same people will finish in the same places. Fair, fair. Uh, on the women's side, Olivia Kerstetter is sitting there uh, on the bubble, followed by Rebecca Vittison, Shelby Neal, Kelly Baker, Sydney Wells. Christine Kohlenbrander down there in 27th. Uh, she's only 32 points out from there. Can't we know she's going to be great on the Olympic total. Is it going to be enough? I don't think well, it's going to be enough Olivia's to edge. To great too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think Olivia is going to be a bit fitter on the intervals. Yeah. Uh, same question, Tyler, Derek. Uh, anybody that you're concerned about that's inside the cut line that falls out? Can Sayer, Kaya, uh, hang in there? Elisa? I... I think Elisa has a good chance on the interval workout, and we know she's going to have a hard time. She has a great snatch. She's not that weak, but, I mean, she's just in a, strong, a field of really strong girls. So I'm, I am genuinely worried, but, I mean, she's a fighter so far. I think, I think Sarah, I think she's going to bump out. Yeah, it's uh, Colin Brander and Barnhart both need a home run. Um, sitting down there in 27th, 28th. I think it's just a little too late. Who do we – who do we like better, Barnhart or Colin Brander? Colin Brander. Same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tommy Payne, $5. Love the discussions. Thanks. No, thank you, Tommy. Wanna, one ahead. of the things I wanted to think about here was recover, like recoverability is definitely coming into play super hard now. So are there any athletes that you think about that might bonk um, just due to recoverability? Like one that comes to mind for me is Bronislaw. Like he's a big dude. That run's probably going to hurt him. Um, and then same thing with the intervals. So do you think any athletes will struggle with that part? I don't think, I don't think a 23 minute. Intervals. Yeah. Uh, mm, I think he'll do well on those. Or not, I mean, no, not I'm terrible, saying, I don't think he I, cares. He's got one of like, he knows he's going to be cut. He, like he's 20, he's 29th place or 30th place, or whatever right now. He knows it's not going to happen. He's got that one event at night in Coliseum where he can show out. The rest of this doesn't matter anymore. Whether he cares or not, his body's still dealing with the 
the test he's been put through. So I don't think he's struggling in the 5K. I don't either. Too slow. It looked like he ran it pretty <laughs> slow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bronislaw basically walked. <laughs> he basically walked that seven minute <laughs> minute mile. Uh, AC 10, 10 uh, pounds. Uh, thanks for all the great coverage. Also currently sitting in 10th on the heat one leaderboard. There we go. So we had Renee. She, I think she's in seventh, uh, after she was first last night. So some, uh, some fans doing pretty well on the heat one app. Um, all right. Picks. We'll start off with the go, go ahead. Just round the horn men and women, uh, on intervals. And then we'll, after that, we'll head over to the, uh, Olympic total. We'll start with you, Tyler. I'm going on the intervals. I'm going Dallin pepper and Emma Lawson. Derek. I'm going Adler and Lawson. All right. Uh, Taylor. I'm going to go Laurel Horvath on the intervals and Chandler Smith. <clears throat> okay. Why, why Laurel go, Horvath? Go ahead. Um, I don't know because I don't want to pick Emma Lawson like everyone else, but I also think <laughs> Laura is a monster on the machines. And the better you are at machines, especially as a woman, that 60 calories is a whole lot more daunting for the women than the men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it matters way more for the women than it does the men, the 15 calories. For sure. Yeah. One second. Roll call in uh, the comments. Uh, comment what your current standings are, everybody, in the Heat 1 app. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Yeah. I am going to roll with Adler. No, and... your standings. Oh. No. Are you your no, picks? Just, just the comments in the comments section. Oh, throw it in oh there. okay. Just the standings, where you are oh, overall. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going to roll with Adler and Jamie Simmons. Oh, wow. Taking a risk here, and I picked her in every league that I'm in. We'll just see what happens. Uh, this is my riskiest pick. It's either going to pay off or it's going to be really bad and it's going to screw me. Uh, I have uh, Chandler Smith and Alex Kazan. So, um, uh, I think Alex did, is a really good pick. She she did well in uh, event two of semifinals, so she has that capability to do the burpee box jump overs. So kind of doing that uh here we go stephanie silviera gi uh first in savans i'll try to convince him to let you on the show i don't think it's gonna happen <laughs> uh amanda 20 21st so yeah a lot of people playing um all right on the olympic total. i'm like 39 get out of here <laughs> uh olympic total we'll start with you john oh that one i i mean i'm gonna pick Bronislaw and Colin Brander. <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is their event. Um, why would you not go for it? Uh, so, like, I uh, I don't know. I mm. I feel like they're the gimmies. Jack Farlow could win though. Jack yeah, Farlow could, yeah. Could win. Um, you know, there's other people to pick. Laura Horvath, I think, is going to win, but I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold her for other other events. So, on that, I think Laura Horvath will win for the women. And bonus slot for the men, but on the thing, I'm going to pick Coleman Brander and uh, bonus slot. Taylor, I probably think Jack Farlow's got a pretty strong chance for the men, um, and then for the women, I think it's hard to pick against Coleman Brander. Yep, Derek Farlow for the men. Do you and think she'll then... beat Laura? I do. Yeah. Go ahead, Derek. Uh, cool. Yeah, Derek. Farlow for the men, uh, and then Horvath for the women. Yep. Tyler. Bronis, I, I feel bad. I really do have Bronislaw in. I don't know if I want to now. I like Jack. Jack's a good pick, and I like his – I think I, his ability to recover might be better than Bronislaw's. Um, so I like him. But for the women, I put I pick Christine. I think she's the best pick by far, and I haven't played her at all, so – <laughs> I think the the thing I th- Christine is probably not I mean she's not going to make the cut and if she does she has to just yeah she has to win it so I'm going to go with Christine over Horvath um, mainly because I don't think Horvath has to go crazy like Horvath can just play it smart hit that 90 95 percent if she's feeling really good 
versus Christine's just going to go for she it. She loves the lift, though, man. Like, I think she's going to want to put, like, a Tia-like statement. It's going to be Coliseum at Saturday night, and this is what she does. Like, lifting's her thing. And, like, she watched her on Instagram. She didn't take – like, Adler said he had to give up a little bit of his strength to run faster. Laura ain't doing that, man. All she does is lift. Um, the, there's a lot I'm, to lose, I'm though, if you don't she go wants for to it. make a statement with this. There's a I lot think, to I lose, I think she though, wants right? to make a statement. There is, 100%. 100%. Right. I, I just think Christine has nothing to lose. Go for it. She could go for the 100%. She Absolutely. could go for a PR. And if she hits it, she wins. Uh, on the men's side, uh, I'm going with Jack Farlow over Braun. Um, but I think that would be fun to watch. Luke Parker, does he have a shot at putting? No. No. Winning, no. winning it? No. He'll, no. he'll have a strong score, but, but not winning. Yeah. He can snatch 300, but his clean and jerk's only like 350. Yeah. Uh, for all the Colton fans out there, how does he do? He's going to be gonna fine. Be... He can snatch 285, and he can clean and jerk 350. It's not going to be anything crazy, but I think he'll be like 10 to 15. He'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, last question. How, how, what's the biggest weight we see lifted? How, how high does Braun or Farlow hit on oh, the clean and jerk? Maybe 380. <laughs> it depends. It depends if they push each other. Yeah, I don't know. That's I, aggressive really for two, for two attempts. For two attempts, that's aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you opening at? Then three fifty. You know what I mean? Three fifty five, three eighty five. That's <laughs> such a big opener. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, and especially because you're gonna go. Um, you're gonna be in the corral. You're gonna get your two lifts at the snatch, and I assume it just goes back through again right after that to the clean and jerk. So you don't even get, you haven't touched the clean and jerk for 30 minutes, probably. Mm. That's I could see it, 345, 375. Like those are the two lifts. Yeah. And I think Braun and, and Farlow will try to put on a show. Uh, $1.99 from Alex Peters, SMTP greater than HWPO. Should I offer tattoos at a booth? <laughs> You just don't get free programming, just tattoos. Yes, yeah. but, but, but it's going to be SMTP inside of a little dick logo. <laughs> and you're giving the tattoo, having no tattoo experience. <laughs> just with some exactly. needle. With a, with a sharpened toothbrush. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. Uh, we will just reconvene at the end of the day. Uh, there's not much time in between the intervals and the lift. So let you guys go get a snack instead of jumping back on here. So we'll see you guys at the end of tonight. Thanks guys.